Has anybody ever told you growing up that in order for you to make a lot of money that you have to study a certain field, get a degree in it, so therefore when you get a degree, you get a job, you make a lot of money in that industry? Well, the same is true if you want to become a millionaire to pick the right industry to make sure you make your money. So outside of being a CEO, a pro athlete, a celebrity, which industries are predisposed to helping you become a millionaire? So I'm gonna give you an answer to those questions in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad. So grab your notes, because we're about to get started right now. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Sapala here, hailing to you from the Money Smart Movement Team headquarters here in Oak Brook, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. And before I even get started, I want to say a huge, huge thank you, because we've officially crossed over 10,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. So thank you. Now, I promised you that once we cross 10,000 subscribers, I'm going to pick a very, very lucky subscriber that's constantly engaging constantly communicating, constantly commenting on all of episodes, and we picked a winner. Our winner is Laya Latui because she is a note taker, and here's how I feel about note takers. Note takers are history makers. Every time she drops a comment, thorough notes. Every, she, every time she watches an episode, thorough insight. Every time she watches an episode, she really tells me what's in her heart, her spirit, her mind. The best part about her too as well, single mom making it happen former military veteran too as well. So congratulations to Laya Latui from my desk to your office, to your home, wherever you want me to ship this out to with your brand, your name, your logo, whatever you want me to put it on, make sure you shoot me a message to the, therefore we can put the details on your custom pair of Jordans. We need your size, all the good stuff. So we'll get you a custom pair of Jordans with your logo from our office to your address. So thank you, Laya. I can tell just by the notes that you've been taken down that you're destined, assuming you put the work and time and effort to do, to do it, that you're destined to join officially the Seven Figure Squad and becoming a millionaire yourself. Now you, if you haven't done so already, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure you click subscribe, hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. And we're going to announce in the next episode of the Seven Figure Squad, the next giveaway that we're gonna do at 15,000 subscribers. So make sure you stay tuned for the next episode as we continue our journey to 15,000 subscribers on the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel. Okay, so let's get right into it. One of the main factors in helping you become a millionaire is picking the right industry. So why is that? Because you wanna know that if you're going to be working, if you're gonna be building a business, you're launching a career to evolve into bigger and greater things, that you wanna know that it's inside a very, very wealthy industry and that you have the unique ability to jump on a platform that takes, help you take advantage of that industry. So I'm gonna cover the five best industries most likely to help you become a millionaire for average Joes, just like you and me. And I'm gonna comb through these industries. This was uh, generated from Business Insider, the, these industries, the top, uh, there was like, I think a total of 16 of them. I'm talking about five here right now. So I'm gonna give you my own system, my own process, my own formula of helping me understand which industries to invest my time and money into based on my three C's of business, which is capital, which is cash flow, and which is contacts. Because every entrepreneur needs these three things to launch their business up off the ground, which is again, capital, cash flow, and context. So let's get started. All right, so coming in at number five, the industry most likely to help you become a millionaire, real estate and construction. So let's process this real quick. What capital do I need to get this business off the ground? So I need credit, lots of credit, good credit, right? You wanna get a line of credit, credit cards, would allow you to charge up a significant balances to get this off the ground. The second thing in terms of capital, you need cash on hand to pay your day-to-day -day bills, operational expenses. And you gotta figure out whether or not you wanna invest in commercial or residential real estate, whether you wanna be in the fix and flip side of things, whether you wanna be an investor side of things, whether you wanna be the rehab, knockdown rehab type of scenario. So th th these are the type of things that you need capital with to get your real estate investing or your construction business 
up off the ground. The second part of how I evaluate this is what type of cash flow, what type of cash flow can I generate if I'm gonna pursue this business, if I'm gonna pursue this industry, what type of cash flow can I generate? Because listen, at the end of the day, I still gotta pay not only my business bills, but I gotta pay my personal bills, my family, my kids. I have to pay both these expenses. So I need, I need to make sure that I'm picking an industry that I can make money right away. And so with inside the real estate industry or construction industry, it's typical that there's a minimum of 30 days wait time for you to get paid. And for a lot of my real estate buffs, I'm curious for those of you watching this right now, what's the typical for the person in real estate right now? For the typical person that has a contract today, you have a buyer, you have a signed contract, you have earnest money, you have pre-approved loan application, best case scenario, person ready to rock and roll today. When do you get paid? When does a clear close type happen? I've got my answers, but I'm just curious for the viewers that's watching this are in the real estate industry. What if you find out is the cash flow sales cycle from contract to clear to close to actual your clients or yourself getting the keys to the new property. Now here's the thing too, depending if you're on the real estate development side of things, it could be months or even years for you to get any return on your money because you got all this capital invested into a new real estate development project. You're gonna have to wait for permits, you're gonna have to wait for uh, certain government, municipalities, cities to allow you to have certain elements during this time of the year, trash, inspections, inspectors. So you gotta put that in the factor in your cash flow sales cycle to figure out whether or not you're gonna get paid now, six months from now, a year from now. It just depends what type of project you're getting involved in. So to get this off the ground then, so what type of context do you need? So the context you need to be in, in, in connection with our developers, real current real estate developers, home builders, real estate investors. You need to talk to brokers, real estate brokers. You need to talk to people that are involved in a city, state and federal real estate or residential opportunities because they might be tipped off to certain things that's not commonly known in terms of the public but based on relationships you get tipped off to certain things because you relationship with those type of folks also you want to talk to current renters and you want to pitch them on the thought that you can be an owner one day instead of saying you know why, why rent why rent you can you can own one day or current owners that want to upgrade or downgrade just depends on what they want to do with their future you want to talk to them too as well these are part of your contacts to get this type of business up off the ground and help you become a millionaire now, coming in at number four in terms of an industry to help you become a millionaire is the manufacturing industry. So to get a typical manufacturing business up off of the ground in terms of capital, what you need is about ten dollars to $50,000 of capital. And a large part about that is having to buy capital equipment to help you manufacture the product for your customer. You need to invest a lot of money into product development. What do I need to create? What, what do people want? In line with that, you need to do a lot of market research. So these are report studies to help you acquire materials to create a product that your demographic wants to buy, wants to put to market, you gotta do that. A lot of that money goes into the research and development before you even hit print or creating a product. And at the same time, you need the equipment, uh, whether you own it, whether you lease it. At the same time, where, where am I gonna be manufacturing? Am I be in an industrial area? Am I gonna do it in my mom's basement? I'm gonna do it uh, in a lease office space, in a retail space? Where am I store my gear? Where am I store my equipment? Where's, got, where's my inventory going to be living at so I can lock up and come back to it the next day and continue my business? So these are some of the things that you have to consider in terms of capital side of manufacturing. The other side of manufacturing, let's process it through the cash flow side of things. Let's say you do have a product. Let's say you've, you finally found the right thing that somebody wants to buy that a huge amount of people want to order from you. Well, it's a lengthy sales process because you got to go from marketing your product to the sales of your product to the manufacturing of your product. So you figure out what people want to buy, you go out and sell the contract, you get, you get the bid, and then you got to come up with manufacturing. And hopefully, when you manufacture for the first time, it's at a low manufacturing cost. And for most things that you manufacture for the very first time, it starts off high until you have a certain amount of volume so you can systematize your process along the way to cut down costs long term. But generally speaking, you might not have that opportunity when you get this business up off the ground because you don't know if this is a long term type of project or not. And then once you get your product to market, you got to deliver it. And when you deliver it to your customer, when do you get payment? Is it, do I get paid up front? Do I get half up front right now? Do I get full, uh, you know, 30 days, 60 days upon full delivery? What is my sales cycle? What is my cash flow going to be once I do all this heavy lifting? When am I going to get paid? All right, some context for you then. In the manufacturing side of the world, who do you need to contact? Who do you need to have as your prospects so therefore you can get sales, you can get the job? Well, you need to contact current large manufacturers already. They may need a niche or a, a certain area of whatever big conglomerate that you're, they're already manufacturing and you might provide a service or a product to them that helps them outsource it to you. In addition to that, you want to contact other subcontractors because people subcontract manufacturing. Like in real estate, you have subcontractors that does electrical, that does plumbing, that does flooring. Same thing happens to in manufacturing. Certain guys do plastics, certain guys do alloys, certain guys do uh, certain special metal uh, or special packaging. Those, so those, those are the type of people you want to be in contact with in the manufacturing world. And then last but not least here, you want to consider gaps in the marketplace. Let me, let me give you a story about Saheed Khan. So Saheed Khan is a Pakistani American billionaire businessman and he's a current CEO and owner of Flex and Gates, a US automobile OEM manufacturer. In 1970, he started Bumper Works which made car bumpers for customized pickup trucks and body shop repairs. Now, this transaction involved a $50,000 
Bucknell alone from the Small Business Administration and $16,000 of his own savings when he started Bumper Works. However, in 1980, he went back to his former company and bought that company from his former boss, which is Flex Engate. And what he did is he sold bumpers to the big three car makers. And in 1984, he began supplying a small number of bumpers for Toyota pickups. Fast forward, he started smashing it, and by 2011, Flexingate had over 12,000 employees and 48 manufacturing plants and a total revenue for his company of $7.5 billion and ranked number 49 as a privately held USA company. Cool part about this, he eventually became the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, becoming the first ever minority to own a professional sports team in the National Football League. Proud of you. Sahih Khan. Okay, third industry most likely help you become a millionaire, healthcare, more specifically pharmaceuticals. So how much capital do you need to get this off the ground? Let's just say hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars to get this off the ground. Not only do you need a ton of money for research and development, scientists, lab results, lab testing, but potentially the liability resulting from a drug that uh, has many different ways to uh, make people sick or sicker based on your drug. In addition to that, back on cap, uh, cash flow, the potential payoff on that flip side is huge. Uh, let's take a look at a drug company out there, Pfizer, that uh, while researching for a cardiovascular type of drug to help the heart through multiple tests, research and development, they actually moved the wrong muscle. What am I talking about? It cured and helped out erectile dysfunction instead of the original heart medication it was designed to be. So Pfizer creating Viagra since its inception, selling it since 1998, they've made tens of billions of dollars with that drug. Now, you may not be the next Pfizer, you're not being find the next Viagra, but all I'm saying is that this type of industry, in order for you to become a multi-million, especially an average Joe like me and you, to get off the ground, very, very high barrier to entry. In terms of contacts, what type of contacts you need to get a pharmaceutical slash healthcare type of business off the ground to help you make a million dollars? Well, suggestion would be that uh, you get your education, you go to college, you start making some connections in the drug industry, the drug business, big pharma, big pharmaceutical companies. You work for them, you understand how they work, the processes, the internal systems. You get to know the approval process, the testing process. You get to know the politicians, the politics behind uh, introducing new drugs into the medical system. And it is that you need to be stacking a ton of cash. So therefore, when your opportunity comes up to either partner or find or found a new drug to the marketplace, you can invest appropriately into that type of investment. But until then, most likely, most likely way for an average Joe to get involved in this type of sector, this industry, is to work for one. Okay, fourth best industry most likely to help you become a millionaire is technology, and more specifically, FinTech and disruptive technology. So how much capital do you need to get this off the ground? Let's just say, if you know how to code, you know, do a lot of that stuff, and you're very techy, and you understand computer, computer program, computer language, very little. But when you start scaling, and you want more end users to get part of your community, start using a social media platform, using your app, you start needing some money, like tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars just to scale and support your team along the way, unless they're willing to donate their time for free in exchange for equity in your company. The third part of that too, as well, in terms of capital to get this started, is you need distribution. So many people in developing a technology, many people when they're developing an app, they need hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars to create awareness for people to download their app, put it on their phone, start using their technology, or go to their website, start using their website for whatever reason, so therefore they can get people subscribing and using it in part of that ecosystem of that technology, and them starting to use it one by one. For example, let's take a look at Uber. Once everybody started downloading the app, you know how to hail a taxi now. Instead of yelling a yellow cab, you know, you hit a button and you order a car to come pick you up from door to door. So that's called disruptive technology. You use an app like, like Amazon. You're buying everything on that app because you use a website to order all the things and start off with books. You start ordering goods and services off the website. Now, with that being said, if you're looking at the cash flow side of this business, well, you'll cash flow right away, but you may not be profitable right away. So, for example, you make very, very little income until more people start using your technology, until you start finding more people to use your app. So zero until more people are part of your subscriber base. I'll give you an example. When you look at Uber, they're still not profitable. Yeah, they're a publicly traded company, but they're still not profitable. You look at Amazon, it took them 14 years to start turning a profit. Now the flip side to that is true too as well. In the last quarter, Amazon made more money than it took them 14 years to make profit. So in other words, the ramp of technology is like this, like this, like this, and a bam. And in fact, the technology side, the technology sector, the technology industry is not only more likely to help you become a millionaire, but it's also more likely to help you become a billionaire. It's most of the fastest industries for you to go from millions to billions more quicker than any other industry that I've mentioned here in the top five, as we reveal number one here in a second. But technology has that factor to it that's going to take a while to get to a million, but it's the fastest to help you get from a million to a billion. From a contact standpoint, who are you supposed to reach out to? Who are your customers? Well, from a contact standpoint, you need end users. You need to find something where people are automatically thinking about something that you're delivering that makes their life 
life easier, that solves a problem for them so they can be your end user. In addition to that, you're gonna have to find angel investors. So I remember watching the social network. I remember Mark Zuckerberg was introduced to Sean Parker, who many people knew, Napster. And uh, he had this uh, bone to pick with the angel investor, the investing community. But anyway, make a long story short, Sean Parker looked at Mark Zuckerberg and says, dude, you don't have a million dollar company. You've got a billion dollar company. And so he introduced him to who? Angel investors. And I remember seeing that scene where these angel investors saw his deal, saw his business, heard his pitch and said, okay, we'll get you started. Here's a half million bucks. So if you're in the technology industry, not only do you need a huge subscriber base of people already using your stuff, but you're gonna need some angel investors help finance and fund to scale the access for more people to use your technology. A couple of context you wanna to add to that as well is investment bankers, bankers, as well as other techies to help streamline and find out holes in your system and your technology to help you find more end users and to be more of a household name so therefore people start using your, your tech. Now I understand firsthand how expensive it is. Our company has an app. I remember being Coast Three could be part of the planning committee to help our app. Our company had an easy seven figure investment into building an app just for us internally to use an application for our independent contractors and agents all across the country. So I know how expensive capital intensive this can be. And every time we have an update, there's always another check that you write to the program or the developer to update your app to fix a lot of bugs and to improve the new deliverables for your end users. So this here can be very profitable. At the same time, a whole lot of money is chunked into this industry to get it off the ground. The next industry, number one industry. Here we go, you ready for it? Drum roll please. The number one industry most likely to help you become a millionaire is, boom, oh, financial services. Now let's take a look at our process here of capital, cash flow, and contacts. In order to lift up and get a financial services type of business off the ground, the cost capital, this is something I directly know about, is between $500 and $2,500, depending on what type of licenses you want to get to obtain to sell in your type of financial services business. Whether it be a financial services license in the insurance industry, the mortgage industry, the real estate industry, uh, the investment industry, registered investment advisor, whatever those type of products and services you want to offer through fi your financial service type of business, the licenses can vary. In addition to that, what type of corporation and entity you want to set up, in addition that what type of administrative support do you need initially to get your business up off the ground? That would be the capital necessary to get your business off the ground. Example of myself, we took 500 bucks and we made millions of dollars of doing that because the low barrier to entry and the low cost to get this type of business started. From a cash flow standpoint, so once you get this type of business started, when do you start making money? When do you start turning a profit? Well, because the low barrier to entry to get this business off the ground, within seven to 30 days, you can probably find your first customers. And when your fir first uh, customers and your first clientele of your financial services type of business with different lines, for example, property and casualty, life insurance, health insurance, investment advising, real estate mortgage, whatever the case may be, within seven to 30 days, you can find yourself most likely your first client, your first customer. Now with that being said, for you to finally get your first customers is really establishing a few things. It's number one, establishing trust with the community, establishing credibility with the potential customer, establishing a meeting to get them to say, you know what, I like you, I, I think you know what you're doing, you're smart, you're intelligent, you can help me out from a financial standpoint, let me sign a dotted line, you become a client, and then you get them result, you transact business, you show them ready to return, you get them an insurance policy, you get them a house, you close on a mortgage. And last but not least, repeat business. From a contact standpoint, who's gonna be your contacts to get your financial services business off the ground? Well, number one is everyone. What am I talking about? Anybody that has a birthday, anybody that's married, anybody that has kids, anybody that has a home or wants to invest in real estate, anybody that has a business or wants to sell their business, anybody that wants to plan their kids going to college, anybody here that wants to retire one day, anybody here that has a center of influence for you to say, you know what, I know you, you're the president of this association, you're the pastor of this church, you're the principal of this school, you're the manager of this restaurant, you can establish your business through that circle of influence to get them to say, hey everybody, hey everybody, listen to this person, I personally know them, I can personally follow for them, they did this for me. That type of person is a good contact for you to have in your back pocket to build your financial services type of business. Another contact for you to consider is somebody as a community leader and leaders of families would be the people that would help you establish your rapport, your trust, your credibility with that particular family or community. So therefore people say, you know what? I like this guy. This guy was smart in these different aspects of my financial planning or my aspects of insurance planning, whatever that may be. And if you establish that trust, that credibility, they become a client of yours and you show them results, they're more than happy to share those type of referrals with you. Now, a great story of who's made multi, multi millions, deca millions, nine figures inside this industry is my own personal mentor, Patrick Bet David. As a CEO of PHB Agency, he didn't start off with a gold spoon in his mouth, no old money, nothing like that. He started off as an immigrant from Iran, served our country in the army, got out in 2001, entered the financial services industry with Morgan Stanley. I think he was probably the only guy that didn't have a college degree. And he started in a 9 10 2001. 
Obviously, we all know what happened the next day, 9-11. Fast forward, he got involved in the insurance industry, got involved in financial services. And today, he's the CEO of PHP Agency. He actually established his business in October of 2009. And 10 years later, he's got the fastest growing financial services marketing organization in the United States, bar none, attracting people like Oscar De La Hoya's investors into his company, attracting people like Kobe Bryant, Kevin Hart, former President George W. Bush to his conferences. So an example of somebody who's made deca millions inside this industry with a very, very low startup cost is Patrick Ben David. Today, he also hosts Value Tainment, which today has over 1.7 million subscribers following him from all over the world. People paying him tens of thousands of dollars to be consultants to their companies all because he built his first business by being involved in a financial services industry. You want to know another story of someone who's not only made millions, but billions inside the financial services industry, look no further than Warren Buffett, the Oracle of Omaha. He today owns Berkshire Hathaway, and a good 45% of his money, his investment company, is invested into the, you guessed it, the financial services sector. He loves the insurance industry. You know why? Because it creates money hand over fist. So bottom line, guys, if you're looking to make a million dollars, pick one of these sectors of the time and attention and money and capital that you're looking to invest in, which best suits your abilities, which best suits your current experience which best suits your current contacts that gives you the best chance to make a lot of money in a short period of time and to give you a chance at making a million dollars as i wrap up this video i want you to know there are so many ways to make a million dollars in the united states of america today and in today's era based on this current economy it is the easiest time to make your millions so i'd like your thoughts your feedback what industry are you picking which one of these five have you never even considered, but you say, you know what, Matt? I wanna, I wanna consider going into this field, going to, into this industry, but I just wanna pause and help caution you. I hope that you enter these industries and having a mindset of putting 10, 15, 20 years of your life to learn how to make your millions. This is, ain't no get rich quick overnight. Even though it's the easiest time to make your millions, you gotta understand, you gotta be willing to put time and effort and allow their efforts, allow your efforts to compound over an extended period of time. It's not gonna happen 30 days, it's not gonna happen 90 days, it may not even happen for five or 10 years, but I just want you to know that picking one of these industries and investing it over an extended period of time will give you the best shots of becoming a millionaire. Now, one of the videos I'd love for you to come check out is this video right here about why I chose insurance over real estate because I had a decision when I was leaving the Marine Corps, do I go down the street at, on Red Hill Avenue off of Marine Corps Air Station, El Toro and Tustin? Do I go on Red Hill to choose this mortgage company to work with or do I choose this financial service company to work with? I think with inside the video, I also give down my breakdown of why I chose the insurance over real estate. And it's not for everybody, but this is why it was important for me to do it. So check out this video, why I chose insurance over real estate by clicking right here. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Seven Figure Squad. I'm gonna be announcing in the next episode what the next giveaway is going to be once we cross 15,000 subs. And uh, let me know what your thoughts are, what type of prizes you give out. Should be another custom pair of Jordans, should be an iPad, should be some form of technology, whatever it is, I love to have your thoughts. I am kind of partial to uh, custom Jordans because I love to know that there's a bunch of people out there wearing some custom J's from the Seven Figure Squad for me to you once you cross certain milestones in terms of subscribers. But let me know. Last but not least, if you haven't done so already, please drop your thoughts in comments below. Let me know your thoughts on what industries you are picking for you that's most appropriate for you or what industry that you think where, where you're at right now gives you the most opportunity to make a million dollars with a short amount of period of time, with less amount of capital involved, with less amount of risk involved, to give you amount of cash flow sooner and faster than any other industry. I wonder what is on your mind based on this video. So with it being said, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your money smart guy, Matt Zapala here. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.